Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero Sixty, and the pain has continued with trying to do this uh, DDE swap. So, hopefully, you've seen the last video. Um, but basically, I'm just trying to do a DDE swap on the 320D wagon, get it running again. Now, I've done a couple of, well, I've done a few DME swaps on the petrol cars. Never had any issues. Never been anything weird about it. Uh, but this is the first time I've tried to do a diesel. DDE or a diesel ECU uh, with BMW's, sorry, with a VVDI BIM tool. And I just want to show you where my thought process has gone. So I've got a bit of information up on here, which is irrelevant, but you basically you scroll down and you select the ECU that you want to modify. And I've been selecting ECU EDC17XX and it's 16 bytes. Um, now I did have a bit of a rough idea that the uh, N47 DMEs or DDEs are 16 bytes where the M47, they're an 8-byte, sorry, a 2-byte DDE ISN code. This is all getting frazzled in my brain. Um, now, basically, what I think is happening, and I, after I finished filming what you saw yesterday, I went through and I flashed the car probably another three or four times. I flashed the CAS, I updated the DME with WinKFP, and I just can't get it to start. And I was doing some reading about how to get ISNs out of these DDEs, and I think... On an old website from 2020, somebody made a comment that BIMTOOL will not read the ISN from an E-series with an EDC17 ECU. So that EDC17 ECU was also used in F-series. And I think this little thing here is F-series. But BIMTOOL don't specify that, and they don't specify an option for doing an E-series ISN with the EDC ECU. I did try the E-Series ISN OBD2 yesterday, which you can't actually see all of the engines that it lists, because BIM tool's amazing like that. In fact, I'll just make sure... No, it doesn't stretch out anyway. But using that option yesterday in the car, it couldn't find the DDE. Now, something I did notice a couple of times. Sometimes BIM tool would pull the ISN from the DDE and sometimes it would just show all blanks. And I did mention that in yesterday's video. Uh, and that got me worried that the BIM tool's not actually reading the ISN properly. And I think that's what it is. I don't think BIM tool is compatible with an E-Series EDC17 ECU. Oh my God, it's crazy. Um, however, uh, what we're going to try next, Dan from Simply Tuning, he has a K tag and it has an option to clone these ECUs. So we're going to see if we can read the EEPROM from my original water damaged ECU and see if we can write it to the donor ECU, put the original ISN back on the CAS and go from there. Oh, and the other thing that caused this sort of speculation is I put the original DDE back in the car last night, read the ISN from that, and it didn't match the original ISN that I pulled from the CAS. This is probably going over a lot of people's heads, but if you're following along and you're trying to do this at home, hopefully it explains it. It looks like BIM tool just doesn't work. Let's see if we can clone it with KTAG, the proper tool, expensive tool. Let's see. Well, I thought about doing a bit of an update. Alien Tech is doing its job, um, but this isn't the next day. And unfortunately, I've just never done anything like this before. And Ben, who is helping me through this, also hasn't done anything like this with Alien Tech, which is a KES tool. Um, we've ended up finding the ISN through the TC1766 read, which is basically the microchip that stores the tune file. So not where we thought we would find the ISN. Uh, anyway, this one is just getting the read from the new DME. I ended up playing around with BDM reading yesterday, which is what that one is. That's the water damage one. I didn't want to open that one if I don't have to. So we're going to try a microchip read see if that's got the ISN because I think I explained that BIM tool just doesn't read the ISN properly okay so we completed a bench read this is called not a BDM read because it's just doing it through the normal ECU ports uh, save that copied it over to this laptop which has an hex editor on it and the BDM read you can see at this address here 17c200 we have an ISN now when we do the bench read this data is blank. So that could mean that the ECU's got a problem or you don't get the information when you do a bench read. So I guess I've got to try a BDM read on it. So now I've got to open up that ECU. Oh, okay, so we've got the new ECU. That is the water damaged one. 
and I don't know if I showed you guys, but it was just a bit fluffy down there. I might have a better photo of it. I did try to clean it up when I was having issues reading the ISN. So we've got the new one in there. Let's see if Alien Tech will identify it, which would mean I've got it all connected properly. So we go, no. Okay, now we can do an identify. It's doing something. Doing something slowly. Transmitting data. I think it's connected correctly. Oh, this is this is nerve-wracking stuff. We're gonna get there. We got the log. Oh. But yes, it has identified. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Doesn't have the engine though, which is interesting. All right, I'm gonna read this and then. That takes about five minutes. You'll see me when we've got it in the hex editor and we'll see if we've got the ISN data. What's wrong? We're gonna go play. Shake. I gotta do some work. Right, I thought I'd show everyone what's going on. Uh, uh, maybe we have a problem, okay. Okay, so a bit of an update there. The ISN was definitely stored in a different location on the donor DDE. But I think we found it here. What I've ended up doing, I've just got Ben's Beamer services to sort it all out. So I've sent him the old, the, uh, the old flash dump, the new flash dump. He's created a new file with the ISN that's currently on the CAS that I've literally just got a flash onto the new DDE or ECU, whatever you want to call it. Let's see if we're still connected. Now I have done a few backups, so hopefully everything's going to be fine. However, I'm still pretty nervous about this. Um, in fact, I'm gonna pay attention because I don't want to mess this up. I'll film when we get to the end and I'll show you guys how it all goes. So, Alien Tech did make me select the new bin file and the old bin file. It did a comparison and it now seems to be flashing. God, proper nerve wracking stuff. I don't know why. Oh, all right, we're getting somewhere, I hope. Now, is that gonna complete? I feel way more confident about this thing completing than BIM tool. Come on. Okay. Writing ECU successfully complete, ECU disconnection in progress. Now, if I do an identify, the VIN should update. Maybe. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, come on. I think the VIN updated. It did. All right, so we've got the actual car's VIN now on the DDE. That's looking good. Guys, I'm gonna put the DDE back together, throw it in the car, see if it'll start. Okay, 74th time lucky. Again. <gasps> oh, yes. Come on, give me no errors. No faults. Ha ha ha. All right, I gotta be honest, it's two days later. Um, yeah, when we tried that first EEPROM, or first flash from the Alien Tech that Ben organized, we did have some errors. Now, Ben did say there's likely gonna be some errors with the checksum. He's never done an EEPROM that looks like the one that is on this DME. Uh, he did some more working out, gave me some more instructions, and about two hours later, I did start the car that day. I've been driving it around for two days now, and we are all good. But yeah, we got there in the end. So basically, all of this, which what turned into, I think, five days of trying to work things out was caused by BIM tool thinking it was reading the ISN from those 
EDC 17 CPO2 DDEs, I've done all the research now, uh, where it won't actually read the ISN from that generation of EDC 17, even though it sort of implies it would. Kind of annoying on BIM Tool's part, but yeah, this is actually the first time BIM Tool has failed and not completed the task at all. It, um, it looks like if you've got a N47 E90 or E91, uh, you cannot read the ISN from the DDEs with BIM Tool. Uh, and it looks like you can't even do it with VVDI 2 either. So it's just something they haven't worked out. You should be able to do it with VVDI PROG, which I have, but I couldn't find anyone that's done it. And also you need a special Bosch ECU adapter cable, which is like a hundred US dollars. So it's a bit annoying, a bit of a fail on VVDI's part, but the car is running. Now, I just need to work out why the DDE box fills up with water. So that'll be another video, and that's probably gonna be the most important one to make sure that we don't get a water damage DME again. Guys, thank you all for watching. Blissful, no faults at its finest. Love it. All right, guys, thank you all. Catch you on the next one.